Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to the Crowded Couch Sessions here on Lickin' Riff, in which me and my good friend Lad show you how to jam and how to solo on an acoustic guitar and how to uh, shine during jam sessions. But in this video, we want to take it a step back and show you how you can train your ears using jam sessions, how you can uh, practice your ears with another person. Now, um, both Elan and uh, myself, we, uh, we, we're both uh, staunch believers in ear training. So we've prepared three exercises for you. The first exercise would be um, the, the straightforward approach to ear training. The second exercise would be a creative exercise. And the third exercise would be a chaotic exercise. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have some chaos here. Um, hopefully, the world will not implode by the end of this video. Hopefully, we'll stay friends by the end of this video because ear training can get tough. Um, so um, the the straightforward approach is to take something that you're not yet fully used to, not something completely new, but something that you're not fully used to. Uh, let's say exotic scales, okay? Both Elad and myself, we, uh, we like exotic scales, but we're not, we're not entirely, um, we're not entirely sure what we're doing when we play uh, exotic scales. Um, I can, I can, um, I can master the exotic scale when I'm uh, when I'm jamming with myself or when I'm teaching it. But when I'm playing with another person, sometimes I'm not entirely sure of myself. I'm not entirely confident in my exotic scale playing. So we're gonna show you how we practice the exotic scales together. It's just two chords. We can take C minor and G. Okay. Right? Now we can also have F sharp minor in there. And if we're, uh, if we're courageous enough, we can have F major in there. So, uh, yeah, ooh, F major. So, um, C minor and G. That's, that's the basic uh, thing here. Now, you can also have G sharp, uh, but that would turn it a little bit into, um, into flamenco style and gypsy style music. So, I would avoid the G sharp, but... This is ear training, so you can do whatever you like. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if, for example, you're not entirely certain, um, you don't feel that you're in command of the pentatonic scale, just play the blues together. Okay, we're, okay let's start with the blues a little bit. Um, we'll show you a little bit of, exam, of, of example um, over the blues. I'm going to play around, he's going to play around. Then I'm going to talk about it a little bit, and then we're going to talk about exotic scales. So let's try the blues. Okay, on uh, which key? Hey. Hey, okay. So. Hey.
were kind of in command of the blues because we've been practicing blues uh, for years now. Uh, I also tried putting some chromatics in there and changing between minor and major, so that might be a good exercise for you, changing between the major, the, the minor, uh, the minor pentatonic. Okay? Okay, uh, and the major pentatonic. Now you can try uh, to fit it in one position. You can. Okay, this is the second position of the major uh, pentatonic scale. And then you can go right back to the minor pentatonic. So you can practice that. How to play both minor and major at the same time. Uh, in the same position, okay, moving smoothly between the scales. That might be your, uh, that, that might be the hurdle that you want to overcome right now. Now, uh, we're gonna play some exotic scales. Now, um, <laughs> I apologize for playing two rounds. That's what we usually do. I wanted to give a short example, but uh, I forgot about it while we played. So I was kind enough to go on for another round. Uh, but uh, the guitar player ego is nothing new, right? Okay, so now uh, we're gonna play C minor and G. C minor and G, um, and play some exotic scales. Now, I have lessons for exotic scales. I'm gonna uh, try and uh, play a solo over the exotic scales. Now, the, the trick would be, the challenge would be, to really hear the changes and to hear how it fits and to avoid the, the minor scale, the, the, the true scale here, to avoid it as much as I can. So let's see if, if we can do it. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna just swing it. Really? We're gonna play and then we're gonna hit. So you can, you can start here. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can start here in the pentatonic position. Okay, so let's see what, what comes up. Okay.
Yeah. Now, um, as you could probably tell, there was a cut be before uh, we started playing. And that was because my, my ears were still stuck on the blues. So, uh, the blues in A. And uh, now I had to play the exotic scale in C minor. So, uh, that was quite a challenge to actually get my ears to recognize the sound that I wanted to play. And it took a few takes, it took a few tries. So, that's ear training, but you, but you saw, it was pretty nice eventually. Um, so, um, that's the sound that I was going for, that, that slightly outside -y sound that gives you that um, non-Western feeling. That, that, was, that was not uh, entirely minor. It was not pentatonic at all. It wasn't bluesy. It was um, it was festive. It was it was interesting. So that was the uh, that was the traditional approach to ear training to, to actually get yourself used to the uh, the sound that you want to get. Now the the interesting uh, the interesting exercise that I uh, thought of. Um, I, I actually planned this for a different lesson. But since Alad is here, I think this would be interesting to try. Um, it's one chord with 11 different bass notes. One chord with 11 different bass notes. We're going to start with B flat. And then we're going to play B flat over A, which is B flat with the open A string. This is B flat major 7, but with the major 7 on the A string. Then we're going to play B flat with a flat, with four on the sixth string, which is B flat seven. And then we're gonna play B flat over G, which is G minor seven. Then we're gonna play G minor major seven, which is G uh, minor over, G minor seven over F sharp. It's all three, three, and three on strings two, three, and uh, four, but with one zero on the A string, four, three, two on the E bass string, then it's F, which is, you can call it F, F7 sus four. Um, you can, and then you have this, and I like this chord. It's the, the, the kind of the tritone here, right? It's the, Try it on. It's this. It's it's the Lydian sound. So so we have B flat over E, and then we have B flat over E flat, which turns it into E flat major seven, but with a sus two as well. So it's E flat nine major seven. Or E flat major seven add nine more accurately. Then over D, which turns it into B flat basically, so it's B flat over D. Then it's B flat minor over D flat, and then B flat over C, which is um, um, it's that. Uh, extension uh, chord. It's, it's C, um, um, uh, 7, 9, and 11. Right? And, or you can call it B flat over C, which is you said it's, extension. It's the, the, hmm? you said the extension. <laughs> I said extension chord, right. It's the extension chord. chord. Uh, Alright, so he's going to play over this. <laughs> he's going to solo over it. <laughs> Uh, so, B flat with eleven different bass notes, right? Ha 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 ha. More accurately, ha 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 ha. Okay. Ha ha ha
I've never met this man before in my life. Did we plan anything beforehand, my good sir? Change. He added another chord there. He he played this chord too. Ah, that would be yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I, which I didn't. Uh, which is kind of a diminished chord there. Uh, so you you can you can do the, you can do the, the diminished uh, arpeggios. Um, so this is this is a really interesting exercise because uh, you don't have much time to stay on any shape because you have to really think about it. And you can uh, you can prepare yourself beforehand. You can you can think about the arpeggios that you can do. You can think, but, but this exercise is best done as an ear training exercise because if if you come to it as um, you know as something written down and you have parts written down, then then the ear training part won't be as effective. Um, so you have to allow yourself again to make mistakes and to listen and to correct it while you're at it. Because if you do, then you're not gonna repeat that mistake. Now, again, there are no mistakes in music, but when I say mistake, I mean playing the right scale for the right chord. And sometimes playing the right scale for the right chord is just adding an extra note. Instead of, instead of playing this, just instead of playing uh, six, uh, six, eight, and 10 for the major, for the major scale, you can play six, eight, and nine. And you're in the minor scale. Um, that's usually how it goes. You don't really have to go over uh, the, the entire neck, um, especially when you're playing an acoustic solo. Now the chaotic, uh, the chaotic version, uh, the chaotic exercise is to not prepare anything and to just change the scales as you go along and trust your partner to, uh, to just follow you. That's, that's a really, really good exercise. So, um, because this is my channel, I'm gonna start. <laughs> Thank you. 
play random chords. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> now, now I, I'm gonna be really embarrassed. Now, like you, you just start. You start. Go ahead. Because you were expecting the chords to change, <laughs> you, uh, you, you prepare yourself for it. And this might look like really difficult, um, like, like you have to know all the scales, but the, the truth is that usually if you go one fret up or one <laughs> fret down, you're going to be in the right position. Uh, that, that's the, the thing here, because if you go outside the scale, then all you're doing is basically changing the array of notes and because the notes are everywhere on the neck, uh, the, the trick here is to just guess whether you have to go up or down. Um, and if you're in the wrong position, then you can do one of two things. You can A, correct it with one extra fret, which is the, the, the wholesome thing to do. Uh, but you can also say, <laughs> what, I'm playing a mode, man, uh, which is, always a good excuse because you can always justify everything um, theoretically if you work hard enough. That's why theory exists to explain why things sound the way they do. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, find yourself a musician friend like I did. Uh, now I have a friend. Uh, and um, 
who walks in two legs uh, most most of the time. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Enjoy.